This is uh, Julie Kedzie online with Julie Kedzie. Um, Julie, you got a, a busy month coming up. Yeah. Uh, a couple of things coming up in July. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about what's coming up at Invicta? You know, it's a pretty stacked card. Um, is there any particular fights that you're um, watching out for? Or um, I mean, the whole card looks pretty good. So. Yeah, you know, the Invicta card is uh, it's July 13th, and it's actually available on pay per view now. So you guys. Get in touch with your providers, whoever they are. Buy the card. It's amazing. It's like $14.95. Like it's cheaper than most pay-per-views out there ever in the whole world. I don't know. But um, you know, it, I think every fight uh, from top to bottom on this is going to be really, really interesting. I have a couple of teammates on there, so I'm going to be, you know, kind of excited about that. Again, can't really cheer for them, but you know, <laughs> in training, it's it's cool to be in camp with so many girls preparing for fights. Um, for the month of July. Uh, as far as you know, fights I'm looking out for, you know, I'm, I'm interested in the rematch between um, Marlos Conan and, and Cyborg. I think everybody is. And uh, this one, you know, I kind of have my eye on that one a little bit. Yeah. Thank you. So Julie, you yourself have a fight coming up at the end of, um, end of July. How's training going for that? Training for my up and coming UFC fight is going very, very well. Um, I'm actually gonna go pick Sarah Kaufman up from the airport this afternoon. So she's coming out for a week to help me out, which I really appreciate. And then of course I have Holly Holm, who, you know, greatest female striker in the whole universe, has been helping me tremendously. You know, so I've, I've gotten a lot of help from people. I've gotten some really, really good sparring. Um, you know, I, I, it's just a matter of, you know, preparation, hard training, and, and just, you know, kind of coming out there like a fireball, I guess. <laughs> awesome. So we're going to jump into um, a couple of questions from your fans. Um, the first one, this uh, particular person wants to know that um, you know, since you've been uh, considered a pioneer for the sport of women's MMA, sorry, women's MMA, um, and you were part of milestones such as being on the first nationally televised MMA fight for women, do you still feel nervous or anxious before your fights? Oh, hell yeah. I'm probably the most nervous person in the world backstage and even the weeks leading up to that. I'm nervous right now. My heart's beating hard right now just thinking about it. I'm always nervous. I think, um, you know, my teammate Holly Holm had a really good point about it. She said, when you lose that feeling of nervousness, then it's probably time to stop fighting because that's, it's part of what makes it special and it means that you're just approaching it just like another thing. You know, every fight is very, very important. Again, every fight is also just a fight. So you have to find that balance, that kind of bipolar balance as a fighter between, you know, making it a really big deal and not making it a big deal at all. But I, I'll always be nervous. I, I, I get nervous walking down the street. I'm like the most high-strung person you'll ever meet. <laughs> Thank you. So um, another um, fan wants to know, what are, uh, where do you get your motivation? You know, I get my motivation in the sport from a variety of different places. Right now, like, I think I just love fighting. So that helps tremendously. Like, I love it. And, and, and getting the opportunity to do it is, is incredibly cool. You know, and then there's, there's little things like, wow, I could fight for a UFC belt someday. Like, that's huge. Who would have thought that when I first started nine years ago? But I could, you know, potentially be a title contender and then, you know, champion of the world. And that's what I have my eye on. That's what I want. Um, how did that just go off again? <laughs> like, that's insane. I thought we just put that on mute. Who is calling? <laughs> oh, do not call on a Sunday morning. It's from Utah. Somebody from Utah is calling Jackson's on a Sunday morning. Hey, Travis, if that's you, we love you. But don't call right now. <laughs> um, so, do I start over? Or just, just go through it? Yeah, let's just go through it. You guys are cool. You know me. Um, you know, so the belt motivates me. Becoming the best in the world motivates me. But also becoming the best I can be at something, like that's really, really important. You know, we're, we're designed as human beings to achieve something. And when we find what it is that we want to achieve, you know, that there's something in us that drives us forward as people. We're so competitive. We're such a, I don't know, such a cool species. And I think that uh, for me, just to achieve this, this goal of just winning a fight, it's such a big thing, it's such a big motivator. When I sit back and I think about it, I was like, wow, there's something I'm going to go accomplish right now. And, you know, that accomplishment I'm working towards is going to happen on July 27th. Very cool, very cool. Thank you. Um, 
So another fan wants to know, you know, uh, or is asking a question about uh, rounds for women's MMA. And, you know, there used to be three minutes. Um, they've finally changed the rules and it became a five minute round for women. Um, how did you adjust your training when the rules changed to five minutes? It's, it's bullshit. Three minutes is bullshit. I was fighting five minute rounds back in, in 2004. The three minute rounds was something that I dreamed up by Elite X Zero. It had something to do with the California Commission. And I had already been fighting for a good five years before that even happened. So they did three minute rounds, five minute rounds. This is bullshit. That was a stupid rule that somebody, you know, adjusted on. And they decided it was better for Elite XZ and, and even Strike Force. I think it happened a couple times. But no. Real MMA is a five minute round, and I've always trained for five minute rounds. Um, when I was, uh, I had a couple of fights with Elite XC, and they were three minute rounds, and I thought it was bullshit. I still think it's bullshit. Five minute rounds. You do not go to a professional basketball game and change the rules because it's girls playing basketball. Or if you do, that's stupid. Like, athletes are athletes. Five minute rounds is the rule. I never had to adjust anything in training except to adjust to three minute rounds at one point which I thought was stupid. So that, that's my answer to that question. Five minute rounds is the way it started. It's the way it should always been. Hell, I'd fight a 10 minute round, but you know, they're not gonna change the rules for that. No, seriously, like three minute rounds, five minute rounds, bullshit, stupid. It should always be five minute rounds. It started as five minute rounds. Three minute rounds was some stupid thing dreamed up by people thinking that women don't have cardio. And it's dumb. Like, of course we have cardio. We're professional athletes. Great, thank you. Thank yeah. you. So earlier this month, there was a um, USA Today article about the uh, Ultimate Women's Challenge, yeah. and the reality show that uh, never has been uh, been seen yet. So, um, in that article, you were quoted as saying that um, I really hope that the show never ever airs because I really think it would set women's back, women's MMA back. I really do. Could you elaborate on, on that statement? Um, well, for starters, there were three-minute rounds on the show. So, you know, that's that's a part of it that would set us back. Um, for another part of it, uh, just the behavior and the emphasis on the show, we were led to believe it was a very professional show, a little bit like The Ultimate Fighter, and it was going to be about fighting. And when they introduced us to these challenges, which were really fun, and I'm not going to lie, especially if you're locked up in a house forever and somebody says, hey, let's go skydiving. All right, yeah, that's, that's awesome. But the... It was like trying to make a real housewives sort of interaction with drama and throwing things and people being rude to each other and, and really sabotaging each other. Trying to bring that kind of attitude onto a professional sport where we, we were struggling for validity and recognition as it was as females. Um, now, women's MMA is in the UFC now. We're established. We've got incredible, you know, pioneers like Louis Carmouche, Ronda Rousey, Gina Carano, you know, people who have managed to you know keep this kind of level of professionalism and fighting forward but if somebody were to watch something like that and it would get to the mainstream eye and they think oh girls just call each other fat and pee in each other's food and that's stupid then they wouldn't even notice the fights one of the fights ended when a, a girl got eye gouged and the two girls started screaming at each other and, and you know i mean i can understand their tensions being high there's a professional fight you should get it out during the fight when the fight gets start, stopped prematurely you know everybody's gonna be kind of pissed but i mean they were screaming at each other across the cage the cameras are here 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 like that and it's like really like that would never happen in the ufc like you can't fighting is real and 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 televised you know drama and stuff like that that's called reality shows that's scripted i mean i would say the things that happen on the ultimate fighter are actually real things like but there's editing and there's this and there's that and, and to bring this kind of i don't know bitchy drama like blah 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 you're taking away from the sport in my opinion now i think the ultimate fighter is a pretty cool show and i think it's done really good things for the sport i don't know what this next season with men and women is going to be like but I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of that, like, in the editing process, they're going to be like, well, should we concentrate on this girl calling this other girl a bitch? Or this guy trying to sleep with this girl? Or this guy calling this other guy a bitch? I mean, that's stayed on that show before. But, you know, then this last season, The Ultimate Fighter came out with, with, with Chael Sohn and, and John Jones. And it was like, wow, look at the professionalism. And look at... That was the best season ever with the emphasis on the training and, and you know these people's like honest genuine reactions and that's what people are it's going to appeal to them the whole drama bitchy real housewife it's, it's all played out now and so if that show were to come out especially right now 
after the bar has been set higher. That would suck. That would suck for all of us. Plus, none of us got paid, so I don't think that they should ever air anything like that till we get paid. You know, if they, I, you know, maybe in editing, I don't know the people who edited it. Um, I heard some people saw the first episode of that show and it was actually really cool looking. That's me. But the amount of drama that happened and the amount of just, where they just couldn't contain letting the pettiness get into the cage and how excited the cameras were by the, the no, there's no pettiness in the cage. You go out there, you beat the shit out of somebody, you shake their hand. That's what fighting's about. My opinion. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Thank you again, Joey. Yeah. Um, so last question that was sent in by one of your fans. Um, they, they're asking about um, some pictures on the internet where you had dark hair. Uh-huh. And they want to know, have you ever considered uh, going back to, to dark hair? Here, here's my thing about dark hair. I loved having black hair. I thought it was awesome. And I, I thought, I, I felt really cute and sexy. It really did. I, I loved it. Um, the problem is that I have light colored hair. So it looked like I was going gray after a month, which I'm, I, I'm as vain as the next guy. I was like, really? I, I, you know, I was like, I have to keep up on top of this over and over and over again. And another thing is I am involved in the stunt community in, in, in New Mexico. And, and I do stunt work and there's not a lot of blondes. So it makes me a little bit more competitive within this community to have a certain look. That obviously, you know, in a movie, you can change somebody's hair, you can do this, you can do that. But just as, as a first look, having having blonde hair within this community is actually an advantage for me for booking more parts. Gotcha. So, so Julie, in the last episode of uh, Kedzie's Corner, we were um, looking for some sponsors for you. You have any any updates for us? Um, not yet, but there's things in the works. So I'm excited. You know, I, I'm excited. I really, you know, I don't want to go out and like be all like, ah, this person's sponsoring, and then they'll be like, no, we never actually signed anything yet. So I don't want to do that. We'll tell you though. I'm not trying to be all. Look, check it out though. My signature shirt is finally out. You can get it on syndicateworldwide.com. I don't know if you can see it, but it plays on the whole. Like my coach is calling me the Lucille Ball of MMA, so it plays on the whole I love Lucy thing. And I thought it was super, super fun. My friend John would design it. In the back of it, if you can see, there's a kitty cat. I don't know if you catch that. There's a little kitty cat up there, just to kind of emphasize the crazy cat lady part thing. So yeah, that's that's what's cool. So if you guys go, we'll probably put a, um, a link to it on juliekenzieonline.com as well. But you can order them directly from www.syndicateworldwide.com. So yeah, buy, buy my shirt, guys. I'll, I'll get some money out of it. It'd be great. <laughs> I'd appreciate it. Help me feed my dog. She's down there. <laughs> yeah. Once again, it's always been a pleasure, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you guys for sending in those questions. I really like being able to talk to you and, and interact with you guys on those bases. Follow me at Jules K Fighter on Twitter. Oh, underscore fighter. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs>